Welcome back, guys, to Pave the Way. Thank you so much for tuning in again, whether you're in your car or at your house. Thanks for uh, leaving us comments, subscribing, all the above. Brent and I today, we're going to talk about business and faith like always, but in that, we're going to talk about authenticity. And authenticity, that's a lot to unpack, but I know you, that sometimes you've heard the saying, you know, I'm just keeping it real, or uh, here's another one that people say a lot is, um, that's just how I am. Yeah. That's just how I am. And so sometimes we say that, but we're not actually being authentic to who we really want to be or who we are called to be. And so authenticity, what is it? It's really just being genuine, being real. And, and being genuine is just being what something is truly said to be. So it's just if, you're, if you say you're honest, you act honest. If you say you're this, you act it. You know? Being authentic is just staying real. But where, where we find that people have problems, you know, when we mentor people or when we find people that we're talking to... Um, a lot of people have a hard time being their genuine self. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And I think they also, I think also they, I love what you said about the, um, that's just how I am, or I'm this way, I am this way. Or my parents were this way, so now I'm doing it. Correct. And it's almost like they're not able to be their authentic self because they're telling their self a lie, in a sense. And, they're, and it's really just an excuse. It's an excuse. Opinion. And I've been there. You know, I think we've all been there to a certain degree, but like when you're trying to be your authentic self, don't fall into the trap of saying, I am this way. This is just the way I am. Like, like he said, find out like, who you want to be and what you want to be and then be that authentic self. Yeah, our authentic self is laying in wait, just waiting for us to be like who we have the full potential to be. And, and until you find the confidence in being that person, you know, I don't, they say fake it till you make it. I tried that. You will eventually have to come face to face with the opportunity to be you. And until you get there, you're going to be behind. Like until you get to where you are you and comfortable in your own skin and comfortable being authentic and, and, and being you, you're going to be holding yourself back. You can't attract things the same way you can as when you're being real because everybody can sense this authenticity. And so the results of all this, of being authentic, are always going to be dependent on how we, how we frame the mindset towards it. So being authentic. So if we look around at the people around us and say, hey, you know, Brent's successful, so one day I'll be successful. Or if we look around at everyone and say, you know, I'm jealous of what Brent has. That's two different mindsets that I just took into the same category mm -hmm. of being authentic. So if I'm thinking about I don't have enough to be around this guy, am I going to be my authentic self? Most likely not. Most likely not because I'm, I'm letting the world produce the results for me versus framing like, hey, I'm going to be honest to me and honest to my values no matter what anyone else has going on. And so that's part of authenticity. Another thing that I write down is always staying true to, you know, your, moral, your morals, but also always taking in personal inventory. Where are you spending time? Yeah. Where are you, who are you hanging out with? It's so critical, especially as you're trying to progress and be your authentic self and, and create this life. Because we all, every single person out there, whether you write them down, whether you admit it, you do have dreams, you do have admirations, you do have things that you wake up for. It's just natural. It's in our nature to want to progress in life. So as you're doing this personal inventory, what is it? What are the things in your life that are holding you back from being that authentic self? What are the things in your life? Like be real with yourself. Be real with yourself. Look in the mirror. And I think a lot of times we struggle to look in the mirror. We went to a, a, a um, little leadership lunch today, and I love what he said about how we all, every leader, and I think everybody just really loves to hear good news. We really don't like to hear the bad news. And when you take that personal inventory, there's going to be some bad things that pop up. Yeah, there's always going to be things that make you unhappy. Like I, every time I've looked at, say, a quarter of my life or a week of my life, anything, it's not always rainbows. Like it's not always the best news, the best things. And I love what he said, too, about the bad news. He said that people don't want to hear uh, the bad news, but that's why you need people in your corner that will give you the bad news. Correct. And you need to be open to the bad news because that bad news, those are the people that are actually pushing you forward. The those are the news, authentic people Those are the life. authentic yeah. people pushing you forward because you're getting real-life feedback. If yes. someone's always giving you, like, hey, you're the best and just puffing you up, it's going to end up hurting you in the long run. Yes. It's going to end up hurting you. You want people that are authentic and real to be around you. And like he said, if you take inventory... It's not always going to be like, oh, I need to get rid of all five people that I hang out with the most. Sometimes it's just one habit that you do with one person, just shelving that and replacing it with something else, something so simple. But on that topic, man, going back to the people around you that are authentic, those are the people that hold you accountable. Yes, you need those people in your life. Those are, how important is accountability in your life? 
And you personally. It's everything. You know, I think having people, you know, going through Joshua's Men at Church, which was this year-long discipleship program that we went through with 11 men from our church, and you kind of had a built-in accountability partnership with your prayer partner, you know, Alex, Rob, I've got people around me that hold me accountable, and it's like, I have to go to work every day because there's men dependent on me that are checking in on me and, you know, making sure that I'm good, and also there in my life and when you have an accountability partner like I want to do the same thing for Alex so I want to bring that to the table for him the accountability partnership in most cases work both ways I hold him accountable he holds me accountable and we both are, are like linking arms and going after a common goal together and you know we're partners in exactly. that and that's how the accountability partners work so you need these people in your life and if you don't have people in your life that are able to give you constructive criticism out of love then you need to go search for those people yeah, you need to find people that are going to hold you accountable. Because like he said, accountability, when if you're working alone, and, and this might be something where you need to find a mentor. You might need to find like someone that's out there that you can just text once a week because you might be a solopreneur. Like if we were doing this alone, it would be... It wouldn't be hard to get up and work every day, but what it would be is like I would probably be finding myself taking more, you know, shortcuts or more, yes. more naps or more, Absolutely. you know, downtime because hey, the business is running itself. But when you have people holding you accountable, like I can't, I can't let Brent and Rob go to work today and me just sit at home. Correct. Like that is not acceptable, and and they will hold me accountable to that. But I also just go ahead and hold myself accountable to that yes. because there's standards in place and there's people that are depending on me, like he said, that are already working, and yeah. so. How do you get to that accountability spot? How do you get to where you can accept accountability or, or criticism? You have to have confidence. You have to have self-esteem. You have to know where you're going and why you're going there. Yes. Okay, the self-esteem that it takes to, to be able to have criticism is that, is that if you're that person that's getting defensive all the time, like, hey man, I really think you should wear different shoes in here. But da -da 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 -da. if that's you, you have to be more open. You have to find what's making you insecure. We're all insecure about whatever, our looks and, and things like that. We, we all have, have insecurities. Yes. We all care about that. But you have to find what's in there for you and, and start loving it, start healing it, and then be open to criticism, be open to getting further. Because criticism, if you can take it and accept it, if it comes from the right source, from someone you respect and love, if you can accept it and take the criticism, it's, it can be what pushes you forward into the next level, the next season of your life, the next goal, the next mindset, the next everything. And it's growth too. It's like the criticism brings, because like if you have authentic people in your corner that are that have your back, their criticism is going to progress you if you listen to it, if you actually listen to what they're saying and actually make a change. And like you said, don't get defensive. So even like this weekend, I had a couple opportunities to speak at the church and I had an opportunity to speak here. And like we both love public speaking and we want to broaden that. That's why we do this podcast is to get better and this podcast has helped us. Definitely. But when I get done with a speech or when I get done doing something, I really love when people give me crit criticism constructively because it improves me and I listen to it. I actually ask people for that. How could I have improved? And that's the opposite of what so many people do. And even me in a time in my life where, like we said earlier, you don't want to hear the bad news, you don't want to hear the stuff because you do have the insecurities. I also thought it was super interesting. The the pastor today at the lunch that we went to said Oprah was you know the best interviewer he'd ever seen, and every time he would inter she would interview a president, a prince, anybody, everybody would say at the end of the interview, "How did I do?" Even the president of the United States or somebody super famous, <clears throat> they even have the same insecurities. So I think it's really cool when you realize that everybody is dealing with insecurities. Everybody feels like they're not enough. Everybody is having the same mental blockages that you are. Other people have just figured out how to get past them and move on and realize that, dude, I'm just going to do me in the most authentic way, and I'm not going to worry about what other people think because I am being authentic. Absolutely. And I'll give you guys a story that will help you build some courage. So there was this one time where I was doing insurance sales, and at the end of a month, my sales numbers were down, and my the guy leading the organization, the boss, he said, hey, man, if you don't start talking to people about insurance outside of this organization, like people that are going to send you referrals, we call them centers of influences, he said, hey, if you don't start talking to some of those, I'm going to fire you. And I had never, I had never been threatened with that before because I was, I was never in that position. But I had started a new job at this uh, farmers that I was working at, and essentially it was like two months in or three months in, and I wasn't hitting the things I said I could. And he said this, so I got a, I, the next day I put on like a suit and I got ready to like go just talk to random businesses. And the first business I pulled up to, it was this Yamaha spot. It's in Kennesaw. Pulled up in the Yamaha parking lot, 
and I literally like sat in the car and I like tried to gain the courage for like 20 minutes. I might have like almost cried. Like I don't know, man. I, it was I was probably 20 four or three and I and I hadn't done the business to business deal yet maybe once when I was 18 That's intimidating, bro. so I was I was getting in there and I was ready to go and I had psyched myself out 20 minutes later I finally just get out of the car slam the door I walk in got my suit on and I was walking in to talk to people that like sold Yamaha motorcycles to like say hey if, when you sell one like send it to me and I walk in dude and that Yamaha was just a corporate office with no motorcycles for sale with like 800 other people wearing button-ups and like no, no centers. Absolutely, of influence. no centers of influence there. Just your normal Margaret and Theodore that are yeah, just that married can't help and you at all. are not going to help me. And, and you I just had, wasted thirty minutes in the car. I, I psyched myself out for twenty-five minutes, just thinking about, <laughs> oh no, what are these people going to think, and how's this going to go, and what should I say? And blah, blah. dude, you got to just take the action. We say it all the time, but you got to get out of your comfort zone. You know, in the Bible, it says, it, spe- it says, out of your heart the mouth speaks. Okay, in the Bible, it says, in out of your mouth the heart speaks. So you know by what you're saying and what you're thinking where your heart is lying. All right, my heart that day when I was in that parking lot had no courage in it. It did not lie with any courage, with no promises. I, I hadn't even started reading the Bible yet. Why I, didn't, I didn't have any faith yet. Um, but by, by taking that action, it helps you get that experience. It helps you get out of that comfort zone. It helps you lean into your faith. It helps you get to the next level. So when to, what's a time where maybe you were able to gain confidence? And then I also want to talk about that I mentioned the heart, how do you keep your heart authentic? So as far as gaining confidence, I would say um, just stepping out in the speaking realms and like putting yourself out there, you, you almost, you have to, you said fake it till you make it. And I, I agree that that's not the way to go, but with the, with the speaking and things like that, it's almost like you just gotta put yourself out there. And as far as how do I keep my heart authentic, I think, the Bible, man, the Bible really helps me just stay humble and realize that it's bigger than, uh, so many times in life, our heart gets wrong because of greed, because of things of this world, like our hearts get sour because we're trying to get ahead or, or we really don't have pure thoughts. And so I think having that reminder of the word of God keeps me and keeps my heart where it needs to be. And then, you know, just having the right people in my life that I want to do well for. I want to provide for my family. I want to provide for our businesses. And I know, again, going off our conversations today, character is so important. Character is so important if you're going to run a business successful. Because if I don't have character and I'm messing up, eventually our business is going to fail. Eventually, it's eventually, going to back. it's going to come. It's going to come crashing down if you don't have character. So it's so critical. And I realize that it's critical to my success that I do have a good heart and that I do have good intentions in the things that I do. So I think it's a process in keeping your heart authentic. You always got to check in on yourself and make sure that you're doing things out of love and not out of greed and not out of trying to get ahead and take it, you know, advantages over other people. So I think it's a process. Absolutely. And to that, I would say the exact same thing. Like for us, I mean, we just rely on the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And then like in the physical realm, it's like, you know, if you're going through something mentally or if you're finding yourself without courage, you know, get in with good music, good books, good whatever hobbies you like to do. Get in with good stuff, you know, fill it in here, then start building your confidence and get ready to take off. Get ready to be your authentic self. And once you can get there, once you can feel like, hey, man, I really don't care what these other people think because, hey, they're on their own life path, too. They're all doing the best they can. They're all doing this. They don't they're not so worried about me when you get there and you can start being you. You'll start seeing the different changes, the different decisions you make, how comfortable you are in different scenarios. And then out of these things, you'll act and behave and love. You'll act, behave, and love. Um, and Christianity can keep you grounded in that. Well, I think Christianity has helped me so much with like just truly falling in love with Jesus and not... I love how Brad always is, is basically, it's like, it's not just act better. It's like, get your heart right. Like, get the heart right. Get Fall in love with Jesus and then... These things that discuss Jesus will disgust you. And you like, I love, he said that Sunday, like I, I love Jesus so much, the things of my past disgust me. And I agree with that. I agree with that. So relying on the Holy Spirit allows you to enter into that authentic self yeah. because it gives you faith. It gives you courage. Like 
I'll be honest, man, there's times in my life where my confidence comes solely from the Lord. There's times where I step on a stage and I feel like I am not equipped. I feel like there's no way, even talking to high school kids sometimes, dude, like you have that thought like, dude, these kids, why, why am I even, like you doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. So there's so many times where I'm just like, Lord, I'm going to go do this and I need you to step up and you almost like put it on him. You yeah. know, and that's where you want to be. It's like, dude, I'm dependent on you for this. Absolutely. And what starts happening there is you get, like you said, you gain the confidence, but dude, your, your soul is made alive. Like yes. you're aligned with the, with the spirit. And there's a quote we wrote down, the authentic self is the soul made visible. Yes. The authentic self is the soul made visible. When you can that. get the, when you can rely on your soul to just like, hey, carry you through and just know you're on the right path. And when you have faith and when you believe in the things that are not seen and you can say, hey, you know, even though right now at 30, I'm, I'm driving this truck and I'm living here, you know, at 50, I plan on these things being accomplished. And every day I'm going to go fight for them in these consistent actions. Yes. The authentic self is, is, is just another area that, that contributes to you accomplishing whatever goal you're looking for. It helps you pave your own way, as we like to say on this show. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. It's kind of like everything. Like The more that you put your authentic self out there, the more that you have that confidence, and the more that you step outside your comfort zone, there's levels to it. You just got to keep doing it, and eventually you're going to get to the where you conquer that level and you're ready to go to the next. That's kind of the season that we're entering into. Yeah. It's like just keep doing it, keep getting better, keep taking one step at a time, and eventually you're going to get to that point where you're like, man, things are starting to work out. Look at, the, look at all these things that have happened. Yeah. And it's, it's just been a journey. Yeah. And I'll leave you guys with this. This is something I either got from a mentor or something about 10 years ago. And he's basically told me that I was prideful. And I said, you know, what do you mean? And he said, you know, you think that everybody cares so much about you. You're so worried about other, what other people think. That would mean that they're thinking about you. Dude, no one's thinking about you. And it was that moment that I was like, wow. I really am like overthinking everything. It was kind of everything. It That's was real. It was relationships. It was talking in front of people. It was this. It was that. But a lot of overthinking that we do is just unnecessary. And and you know he said it was prideful. And I really looked in the mirror and and I and I agreed with him. So if you can take that, help that, help use that to become your authentic self and try to become the best version of you. It's waiting. Thanks, guys.